As part of our study of fiscal policy, let's spend a few minutes looking at an important tax, one that's often not really studied by students, uh, and that is national insurance. So what is national insurance? Well, national insurance is a direct tax, similar to income tax in that respect. First introduced over 100 years ago, and National Insurance Contributions, or NICs for short, well, they're paid by both employees, people in work, and employers, the businesses who employ them, and also the self-employed. So these are direct taxes paid by both employees and employers. And uh, the general idea is that it raises money through a sort of national insurance system to help fund the state pension. And uh, things like welfare benefits, such as job seekers allowance and um, maternity pay and sick pay. So, how much national insurance do people pay, and also employers? Let's look at employees first. Now, this is changing all the time. There's been several budgets recently, but this is the most recent information I can get. You don't pay national insurance on the first £242 that you earn per week. So, essentially, there's a, a tax-free allowance. And you pay at 12%. The marginal tax rate is 12% on earnings from £242 through to £960. Seven pounds a week. Thereafter, if you're earning more than four thousand one hundred eighty-nine pounds a month, you pay national insurance at two percent. So, to give that a bit of perspective, if you're earning a thousand pounds a week, just over fifty thousand pounds a year, you don't pay anything on the first two hundred forty-two pounds. You then pay twelve percent on earnings between two four two and nine six seven. That's eighty-seven pounds, and then you pay two percent on anything above £967. So, if you're earning £1,000 a week, you're paying uh, £87.66 a week, or basically a, a tax rate of 8.76, or 8.77%. Uh, employers also pay national insurance. This is quite important to understand. So, it's a tax paid by both the person in work and also the, the firm, the business, the employer. Employers pay 13.8% on the gross wages of their employees above £175 a week. And they must also pay national insurance on lump sum payments, redundancy payments, for example, or benefits, bonuses given out to workers. So national insurance is paid by both the employee and the employer. Now, how much revenue does this generate? Well, the, the answer is a lot. National insurance is one of the three big tax revenue earners for the UK. This chart confirms this. Climbing up towards £160 billion a year. Obviously a bit of a dip during the pandemic. Uh, VAT fell quite sharply during the pandemic. National insurance kind of levelled off, in part because of furlough. People were still being employed by businesses. The government was furloughing millions of workers. But you can see that uh, since the turn of the century, uh, national insurance has gone up significantly. Obviously, people are getting paid more, more people in work, the economy is bigger. So typically, national insurance goes up when unemployment is low and when wages and earnings are rising strongly. Well, finally, why is national insurance an important tax to study? Many students are unaware of national insurance. They tend to focus on things like corporation tax, and income tax, and VAT, and rightly so, they're three big taxes. So national insurance doesn't quite get the attention I think it deserves. First of all, it is one of the top three sources of tax revenue. So about £3 billion a week comes in to help fund public services, education, health, defence, and so on, from national insurance. And any changes in national insurance, both the percentage rate and the allowance, that's going to have a direct impact on people's disposable incomes and therefore their spending power. So a change in national insurance can have quite significant macroeconomic effects. And as we've said, national insurance is also paid by employers. So essentially, it basically affects the cost of employing or taking on extra workers. And some regard it as a, essentially a tax on jobs, fast-growing businesses, maybe small businesses looking to take on workers full-time, part-time they will have to pay national insurance. Some people argue that if the government wanted to boost employment, uh, they should be cutting national insurance, perhaps uh, for businesses that take on younger workers or businesses that take on long-term unemployed workers, so on and so forth. Now, the money raised by national insurance, 160 billion, 150, nearly enough 160 billion a year, that 
essentially is aimed at funding the NHS and state welfare. But in fact, in reality, it just goes into the general pot of tax. Some people are now arguing that we should be raising national insurance to provide significant extra funds for the NHS. We know that there's a financial crisis there and also for social care because the burden of health and social care continues to rise year on year. And we know that going forward, that burden will, will be very, very significant. So there's a big issue about how you pay for the NHS and social care in the years to come. Well, hopefully this was a useful, quick primer on mass insurance. Thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive, and see you sometime soon. <laughs>